And our final speaker for the evening is Marsha Danzing. And uh, Marsha is a recent convert to Dayton. Welcome. Having moved from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, where being wicked, I said that wrong, is a good thing. <laughs> Besides her love of fashion, dance, and all things flamenco, she's the first amputee yoga uh, teacher in the US. Founder of Yoga for Amputee and author of a new memoir entitled From the Roots, How I Beat Death and Learn to Live. Presently, you can find her at coffee shops in the Dayton area, presenting, uh, pretending to give up caffeine as she finishes her upcoming book, Yoga for Amputees, A Guide to Finding Wholeness After Limb Loss for Yoga Students and Their Teachers, or as she likes to call it, my God, when will I finish this thing? Welcome, Marsha. So, um, I'm five here, and I was given last rites, and there was a 15% chance of me being alive. I had bone cancer. I survived, and so for me, pink tutus, pink leotards, lace, Catholicism, <laughs> they're all interrelated. Uh, then I was free for a while. Uh, no chemo, everything was great. I dressed like a boy. Um, I got short hair, I swam, I did gymnastics. I didn't care what anybody said or about me or to me. Um, I'd already been through cancer, so <laughs> what the heck. Um, and then it came back when I was 13. We moved to New Jersey, and I started to wear Fair, Fair Isle sweaters, which are very pretty, and scarves. Um, but this time, uh, I couldn't get uh, radiation again, so I had to have a lower leg amputation. I became an amputee. This was at Sloan Kettering. So my rebellion was to wear um, Chinese shoes with flowers on them and punk rock pins. I went to an all-girl Catholic school where we weren't allowed to wear any of these things. So this is my one defiant moment through uh, high school. I didn't have hair then. I wore a wig. And so when I got to college, the first thing I did when I got my gorgeous hair back was to start wearing hats because I could, not because I had anything to cover up. So I used to wear fedoras all the time through college, and berets. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> and then we have leopard. So leopard comes around every time I feel a little endangered by some other medical issue. Um, in my 50s now, it's been a long, interesting journey. But leopard comes up every once in a while, um, especially um, if I'm feeling a little sassy or a little pissed off. Um, this is me in LA, basically. I moved to LA and I opened a sweater company at 23, and the company was called 1949. It was to bring back the uh, golden age of couture with uh, Christian Dior. I had a friend who bought one of my sweaters, and she said, who needs a boyfriend when you have one of March's sweaters? Um, then I started to wear Emma's scarves. So those are beautiful hand-painted scarves. I wore them all the time, any way I could. And I could wear them on my head because I wasn't covering anything up anymore. I could just wear it as a beautiful scarf. I would tie it to my pocketbook. And it was really a precursor for me to get to Paris. So I moved to Paris. Um, why not? And I learned how to flirt really, really well. I learned how to smile and pout. I learned how to wear a hat just so. I learned how to wear a full body lace stockings and to go to French movies and cry a lot. <laughs> then I got into graduate school and I knew I had to be taken seriously. So while I was in Paris, I actually saved up every last dime and I bought an Yves Saint Laurent suit. I wore it a lot because <laughs> graduate school was really expensive. And this is basically my outfit for a year and a half. So, and then the doctor told me that my kidneys were gonna fail. So I left graduate school and I moved to Massachusetts. I was on dialysis. And I had scars all over my arms, so that became another period of hiding. And I wore a lot of long sleeve skirt, long sleeve shirts. But I discovered African dance, and so I began to wear African skirts all the time, and that brought me back to what I call primordial rhythm, to, stay, to keep me connected to the rhythm of Mother Earth, to keep me connected to my life force. And like, is it Jill? I was talking about dancing. 
Um, then I found yoga. Um, oh, and in between that, I got married. So, because it's really irrelevant, you'll see why. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then I started to do yoga. And I obviously was an amputee, so I had to show up barefoot. And I wore a lot of stretchy clothing, which made me feel really free, because dialysis, you're trapped to a machine for about four hours every other day. So it was a lot. And then I got divorced, so I started a flamenco dance where you stomp your feet and kick the skirt up and just say bye-bye, stupid. And then um, um, ballet, took up ballet again, I got a kidney transplant, and here I got braver. That's a picture of me for a book. And then my, one of my friends flew out from California, and she said she wanted to play dress-up with my prosthetics, so I brought out a ball gown thinking we were going to dress me up, and she wanted to dress up the prosthetics. So there's a video on YouTube with them wearing wigs and mini skirts. Um, everything fell apart. I was supposed to move to Dayton. It didn't work out. So the next best thing to do, of course, is to move to Cape Cod and join the Cape Cod kittens and become a burlesque dancer. So that's what I did for a few years. Um, this was Catholic burlesque. We didn't undress, and the songs were not that raunchy. Um, but still, I got to be... And then, this was my decision in my 50s, when I turned 50, I was like, what am I going to do? How am I going to dress? That's what was important to me. I remembered Shocking Blue and the song Venus, and that's my outfit for my 50s. A poncho, high boots, black leggings, and big hair. I also got the opportunity to wear a lot of costumes in my late 40s and early 50s, so alter egos that aren't really that alter, rocker, pinup girl, superwoman, Santa, and then there's one in the middle that's missing, which is go-go dancer. So got to do all of those. And I always say, always remember to keep your fairy wings around. Um, because one of the reasons I've been able to stay alive is to stay innocent and not jaded and not bitter. Um, to keep the magic alive and stay curious. I moved to Dayton um, this past year and a half. I had a few more medical glitches, so <clears throat> the next best thing to respond to that <clears throat> was to get the bombshell dressed. So that's what I'm wearing tonight, and that's where I'm at right now. This is my next step in my evolution, is to dress like a bombshell. <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> so. Thank you, Marcia.